I'm in Salad and I saw Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It is directed by James Cameron. And if you haven't seen this movie, I will spoil it for you. This movie starts, first of all, Sarah Connor is in a hospital because she's deemed insane. And that in itself is insane. I think this is all a ploy for the government to sweep this underneath the rug and just be like, oh, it's all right, it's okay. We'll just have somebody to pin all of this damage on. All 30 cups got, uh, got MDK'd and it's no good, it's no good. We got two Terminators. We got a T-1000 and a T-800. T-1000 is terrifying. The T-1000, T-X-1000, X-1000 terrifying. This is what T-1000 means to me. It is so terrifying. Imagine there's this Terminator Android thing, MDK machine that can just pew, 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 just regular, all right? Now imagine a model that can turn into liquid. It can transform into any persons like the people behind me. They can turn to any one of them and murder you. It's kind of terrifying, actually. I also know that with James Cameron forcing them water simulation technology to be advanced. This is the first one with the water technology uh, where it looks like with all the reflections and all that fun jazz. First of all, I really like the look of this, this Terminator movie. Even if it's at the very, very early stages of this technology being made, I still love the look of it. It's so quaint, even though it's so terrifying at the same time. Of course, we have John Connor is being pursued. We have the TA Hundo. Remember Arnold Schwarzenegger from the last movie? The Terminator from the last movie? Well, we got that guy and he's here to save and protect John Connor, which is a twist. I honestly thought he was here to do a little MDK of John Connor, but we gotta make sure that Sarah Connor is safe because we got a T-1000 trying to MDK John Connor, and this is some big old mess. Oh my goodness, this movie's tension is so great. Also, the moment we're seeing Sarah Connor in the hospital is also great. The way that she explains her situation, she's trying to plead, hey, there's these Terminators that are coming in the future and no one is willing to listen to her. Even though she is ultimately right, I still don't understand Well, no one listens to her. I mean, on the one hand, she sounds completely insane and made up and everything in her head is made up. But if she's so adamant about this, you know, I feel like that I would take a little listen, you know, like, huh, she might know something. This might not make sense to me now, but maybe in the future she knows something. But at the same time, this is me assuming that this person has time travel, which people do not. So I'm not sure if I would actually believe Sarah Connor, but I would like to think that I would believe her. Oh my goodness. The moments where we're seeing Sarah Connor John Connor, ter both Terminators, they're all converging at a hospital and it's terrifying how much collateral damage there is. Plus, the it's kind of like a cat and mouse chase that's going on here with the whole, oh, we gotta go find, we gotta go find Sarah Connor and try to get her. Also, Sarah Connor finding great ways to get herself away from the, what are those people called who work at hospitals, by the way? Uh, I'm gonna call them, Nurses? Yeah, getting away from them nurses, beautiful. <laughs> iconic moment, okay? Very iconic. We have the old Terminator that Sarah Connor is very scared of. And we have the old Terminator holding his hand out and is like, come with me if you want to live. Mmm, iconic. And I'm like, oh my goodness. What bigger danger could there be than this Terminator who went after Sarah Connor the entire time last movie? Well, we have these water Terminators that will not stop, okay? I like how they go south. They go south, they're about to escape to Mexico. They do go south. All it says in the movie is that they go south and I like the south place that they're at. Oh my goodness, it's so dusty, it's so dirty. 
They're having a nice little chill moment. We have John Connor, we have the Terminator. It seems like John Connor is determined to humanize the Terminator, which is great. Learn more about the Terminator's thought process, which is it learns, it will learn from people, which I appreciate, might as well be a person if you have like, some sort of learning module. But in this case, if the Terminator is very close to a person in this instance, but he's a machine, does that mean that AI who also have the learning terminals in their coding is also human? Uh, leave a comment below. All of this, all of this learning module brain stuff is kind of confusing me. I am no science major, okay? I'm no computer science, okay? Sarah Connor gets a nightmare without any explaining to anyone at all. I'm just gonna drive. I'm just gonna drive to the person who created the chip for the Terminators. And I'm just like, this is hilarious. No communication. Very lucky that we have John Connor and the Terminator actually figures out what her plan is because the Terminator is big old brain. Luckily, he's a machine of a person, so he has all this knowledge and data and such. So we have Sarah Connor. She's going to go pew, pew, pew to the creator of the chip. But she realizes she's not a machine. She's not a Terminator. She is, in fact, a human. She's not able to MDK on the spot, which is very humanizing. And it's also very humanizing for John Connor to repeatedly tell the Terminator, who is easily able to MDK humans, that, hey, you can't just MDK people, okay? You can't just do that. I see why now that John Connor is the leader of the humans in 2029, man. I see it now. Even as a youngin, he's trying to keep the peace. He's trying to keep things on task. Even when we have a Sarah Connor be like, hey, well, you, you, you ruined my life, bro, Miles. We have John Connor's like, come on, we got it. We got it. We have bigger fish to fry. Come on, you can't just like sit here and do nothing. We got to formulate a plan. We got to formulate a plan to get into the lab. We got to blow up the lab. First of all, the sequence of going into the lab, very nerve wracking. We also have a very human mistake that allows them to get caught in the first place. Taking that receptionist, clerk, police guy, security dude, putting him in the bathroom where anyone can just see him and it triggers a silent alarm which they're not able to get into the place in which they want. And so I love the Terminator's use of his key, which is just like big old Koblawi thing and he blows the whole door up and the whole lab is exposed, but there's this gas and uh oh, we can't, we can't breathe in the gas. It's part of the fire safety. And I just love how much this movie, I know the details of. I'm just like going stream of conscious. And there's not a lot of movies I can really say that I can go from, oh, well this happened and then this happened and this happened and this happened. If you've seen any of my other reviews where I'm like, well, actually it's basically this and then this and then that's the plot. Those are not good movies. This is an excellent movie. Already, at the very beginning, all the way through the rest of the movie, excellent movie, and I'm not even done explaining the movie. That's how good this movie is because how much I can remember. Oh man, that was a lots of words. We got a bunch of the cops, and I love the Terminators. T-800, by the way, T-800's way of making sure the cops don't mess with them. Just blow up all of their cars trying not to injure anyone, and there are no human casualties. Also, I really like on the screen of the Terminator's face, there's like a human casualty 0.0. .0. What is a 0.1 through 0.9 human casualty? Does this mean like a, a degree of injuredness on the human's part? Or is like, oh, well, they're almost dead at like 0.9, and 0.1 is just like a broken ankle. What is the decimal point for? Oh my goodness. Of course, we have the T-1000. It's coming to get them. I like how successful the blowing up of the lab of Skynet is. The, the what is it called? The Cyber Dome? Uh, Karen, could you please correct me? I forget what it's called. It starts with Cyber and it ends with uh, Cool. So Cyber Cool, all right, this company Boom! Big old explosion, right? Blowed up all of their data. They cannot create any more 
Terminators. We also have the chip in the arm. We're also in a car chase. We're trying to get out of the place. And oh, we're in a car chase and we actually end up into the steel mill with all the lava and such, which is cool. First of all, liquid nitrogen. Great way to stop the T-1000. And liquid nitrogen is very cold because of liquid, the nitrogen in the air is already very gaseous because that's the third stage of heat. You, you, don't need, you, don't need a, you don't need a gaseous solid liquid lesson from me. You have other YouTube videos for that. But nitrogen is very cold and it makes it very stiff. He's a stiff boy. He's just being shattered, and I'm like, oh, got him, but hey, actually the number one rule in horror movies is that the bad guy always comes back. And of course, with the steel mill, you have a bunch of lava, and with the lava, make sure the liquid nitrogen-esque metal is unliquid nitrogen, and is in fact just regular old metal again. Not cold, not shattered, and he comes back and he's trying to get you. And of course, you got Sarah Connor. No, not Sarah Connor. No, no. John Connor is very smart, okay? He's like, okay, I'm gonna have a chill old time. I'm gonna make sure that this T-1000 don't get me. The t 1000s really good at stopping the T-800 because, oh, let's just slam his arm into a gear. Ah, oh, he's physically blocked. Uh, get him. How, how about you get out of the sticky situation now, huh? And I'm just like, please get out of the sticky situation, you know? I would greatly appreciate it if you were to save John and Sarah Connor, and he actually gets out. There's like several attempts in which the T-1000 is trying to have him just chill there, just stay there, just stay down. And the T-800 is forever resilient and protecting Sarah and John Connor, and it's very lovely, okay? We have the T-1000. 1,000 is posing Sarah Connor. I'm like, no, wait, Sarah Connor, how did you get out from the place that you were at? Oh, this is actually the T-1000 posing as Sarah Connor, and Sarah Connor has a little gun. It's like, pew, pew, pew. And I literally like the shotgun blast. It's like a big old shotgun blast. Of pew, pew. We're going to stop him. We're going to push him into the, the lava behind him with big old force. And we don't have enough bullets for that, but luckily the, the T-800 is here to shoot a big old bullet, and he's like, all malformed and such which i like there's a weird visual imagery and i thought okay so we're next to metal and this guy is very warm i'm going to assume that his body is being very solidified which is hard for him to get into proper formation let's just push him into the liquid uh, lava goo what is in a steel mill lava Sure, molten lava. So we've got the molten lava and doing, phoom, oh, he's melting. Oh, we gotta put the rest of the stuff that we found in the lab. Okay, we got to put the jip in. We gotta put the arm in. We gotta put the Terminator T-800 in. And this part is so sad because the T-800 is like a friend at this point. Man, even John Connor has a relationship with him. And I'm like, oh no, please, I don't want you to lose him. Like, I'm feeling the same emotions that John Connor is. You know what I was thinking? while I saw them throwing the metal into the molten lava. When does that molten lava cool? And if that molten lava ever cools, will the metal be able to re-transform into the T-1000 and become an, a Terminator again? You know, I'm not sure how molten lava works, so I don't know what would happen if the steel mill would just suddenly shut down. And this lava is very hard, and then there's a bunch of metal just floating in there, and I'd imagine that the T-1000 could reform again. But this movie doesn't really say that, so I'm honestly really curious. And now we have Sarah Connor, John Connor having a little chill old time, and they're bright about the future. And I'm like, wait, hold on. I still think that the Terminators still exist. There must be some data that was still there that they forgot that was able to help make more Terminators in the future. You might have delayed the nuke that was happening, the nuke that you had in your dream at the rest stop in wherever, in I guess south, south of America, I guess. Uh, anyway, I, I thought that was pretty cool. The poom poom poo, the colors were cool. Oh my goodness, the colors are epic. Oh, I love the colors so much. They're so vibrant, especially during the last scene, the final battle scene. Mwah. Oh my goodness. 
I love the colors. Overall, I thought this movie was so enjoyable. It is so fun to just ramble on about what happens in Terminator because all the events just slip off my tongue. I could just recite to you exactly what happens in Terminator in the order that it happens, which is a great movie in my book, a movie that was memorable and makes me happy and makes me also scared of the future is a good movie in my book. There's so much character progression, especially with Sarah Connor, with John Connor, with the T-800, which I didn't know you could have character progression for a machine, but you can. So much great character progression in all three of those characters. Everyone else, like the cops and such, I don't really care about, but eh, I can understand why cops are scared and stuff. So, based on my enjoyment of watching this film and the whole character progression, the cool camera movements, the whole uh, delivery, the acting, oh my goodness, that's so great. I gotta give this movie a solid like nine. 0.5 out of 10. Oh, I got people there. If you like this review, watch another one. YouTube really likes it. You can also like, comment, subscribe, share this video with everyone. You know, the ultimate goal of this channel is for me to become an expert movie reviewer. So if I haven't reviewed it on a channel, there's a chance I haven't even seen it at all. If you'd like to request a movie in the comments below, you can do that. You can fast track a movie review, patreon.com slash ASU presents. $20 a month for one movie review per one month, $3 a month, how to draw a Pokemon tutorial, it's supposed to early and first, all at patreon.com slash ASU presents. And if you'd like to help support the daily grindiness of all these daily movie reviews, and go to this link tree, find the way you can help support the daily grindiness of all these daily movie reviews. So you can go here. And until next time, I'm in South Sa. I'll see you later, my Sa. Croutons, big bits.